What's going on? I hope you're doing great out there. Uh, welcome to another video. This is just gonna be a little quick video. I'm in the middle of this project of making a cart, pretty much, for this one inch thick piece of steel I have back here. It's what I use for TIG art. I tack stuff down to it. Use it as a big heat sink, but that's kind of beside the point. The thing weighs like 170 pounds, so it's kind of hard to offload it. Um, in the middle of this cart project, I have some three inch 80 thousandths square tubing right here. And when I was fitting it up, unfortunately it doesn't really fit in my drop saw back there. So I had to cut a lot of it by hand. I had to match up cuts that I halfway cut with the drop saw, finish them off by hand. And while squaring it up and tacking it together, I actually ended up with a gap. So to make it square and how I want it to be, without recutting the piece and wasting material, I actually don't think I have enough material to even do that. I ended up with a small gap right here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I personally will weld this gap up and the techniques I would use. I have a piece of Blue Demon 1 16th or 1.6 millimeters ER70 S2 TIG rod right here. And as you can see on the side gap, it easily fits down in the gap. And on the front, there's a couple spots that'll go through too. So quickly, I'm gonna go over how I would weld this up. It's very similar to my weld any gap video that was kind of long drawn out and then you couldn't actually see exactly what I was doing. So hopefully in this video, it's gonna be clear. I don't know if this technique works on any gap, but it definitely works well on thin sheet metal and thin tubing like we have here. So after I tack this all up, you can see I have a big old fat tack here. I might grind that a little bit smaller later. I welded the outside corner first because I feel like that has a less chance of pulling and warping the part versus this one I feel like would pull the most and these could pull up or down. You don't want either of those either. So I welded the outside corner first. So next we're gonna weld this inside corner. You can see the gap that we're gonna be working on. All right, here we go. The main idea behind this is you're essentially making little teeth all the way across the gap. So you just get a little bit of a bead started, preferably at the bottom seems to be easier, and then maybe melt the top and bridge them together or what seems to work depending on how big the gap is. You want almost as little filler as possible, but as the little bridges come together, you're jumping over a gap and making another one, trying to space out for every other bead when you actually weld. You can see that while you're welding, it kind of wants to pull away, which is the problem when you just weld this straight and don't do this process, because as the material gets hotter, it's gonna get harder. It's gonna flow in more as you go across. So this kind of gives you some support as you run your final bead across. I'm having kind of a hard time staying consistent. You wanna keep these uh, about the same spacing and size as possible, but I'm kind of trying to reach around my camera here. So it's making it a little bit tougher but I wanted to give you a really good view of what this looks like. And here's what it looks like after. It doesn't have to be pretty, could be a little bit more even, but you're gonna go back over it with your final weld anyway, so you really won't even see this. Before welding it, I like to get all this blue oxidation off of it because I feel like that draws into the next weld. So I'm gonna use a wire wheel, just in case the weld is still a little bit warm. You could use a Scotch-Brite pad, but then if it's too hot, you kind of burn some contaminants down in there. Now the weld's cleaned, acetoned off, we can go back over with the last pass. So first thing is getting that big tack that was on the beginning melted in and in the shape of a presentable bead. And then you're just starting to dab along, melting in the tacks we already have, using them as a little bit of filler and not adding quite as much, and then putting a bead hopefully in between each one of them if we space them out correctly. So in between, you'll add a little bit more filler and then right on top of the tacks for the bridges, not as much filler. Just trying to keep an eye behind you, behind the puddle, seeing how high they are getting, trying to get them as even and as smooth as possible. And just like that, we should be good. Um, there is a little bit of debris in the weld that I see. If yours has too much, you could always just 
go right back with the grinder and, and scallop that weld out and go right back over it, you know? And I'm talking projects like this, like we're building essentially a table for your shop. I'm not talking aerospace welding here. Like actually nothing on my channel should be considered for aerospace welding because that's not what I do. Another thing I could say is the heat signature is a little wide just because of how slow I had to go to melt those tacks down in and try and get them to lay flat and kind of melt them into each bead to make it look like they were never there. But I hope you found that useful and can use it on future projects. Uh, normally I would use some type of stainless filler. I actually think it works a lot better with that kind of filler because it stacks up so much better. And on a project like this, I would absolutely be using that, even though it's not the called for filler. But like I said, it's a table. I wanna get better at my ER70, so that's why I kinda committed to welding this whole thing up using it and the way it flows and the way it covers. And I'm just really trying to get shinier welds with it, which I'm kinda struggling with. But if you wanna see more of my videos, uh, you can click this one up right here. And if you liked this video and found it helpful or entertaining, well, if you give it a thumbs up, let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you're new to my channel, I really hope you stick around and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.